A couple of weeks ago, I had a huge issue with my computer and specifically with the heat inside of the computer as well as the heat of the office that I was working in. And at some point it was so bad that I was actually using these two cooling pads inside of a small box below the computer to cool the whole thing down. These things are frozen hard, they are filled with water and they dissipate a nice amount of cold air or coldness and uh, that really helped. However, let me tell you how I actually ended up fixing the problem. Maybe you can relate. MacBooks are really pretty devices and they're great to work with. However, because of the small form factor, there's not actually much room for cooling. And that has been a topic for many videos on YouTube already. But now I wanna tell you about my story and the whole heat issue and how I came to resolve it. The computer is a couple years old at this point and it became slower and slower. I didn't quite notice that as badly until I actually started working out of that attic that I recently mentioned and I'm gonna also include a photo right here. That was the place where the problems became really, really bad. It was actually there where temperatures during midday times actually hit somewhat of around 28 to 32 degrees Celsius. At least that's the temperatures that I noticed because usually after that I would just bail out and work from some other room of the place. However, I also wanted to do live streaming at the time really, really badly. And that's where I noticed the problems because, because usually my computer is able to handle a good amount of live streaming. However, in that room, it didn't. So I started to investigate the whole topic and found out that there are actually many things going on at the same time. I even found videos where the suggestion is to change the thermal paste inside of the computer, but I thought to myself, do I really have to take apart the whole damn thing to change and fix this? Well, I was lucky that I didn't have to do that. My investigative journey on this topic started with using the tool iStat menu. This is a tool where in the menu bar you actually get a whole bunch of things that you can display and track with graphs. The most notable thing for me at this moment was that I started tracking the CPU temperature as well as the GPU temperature and the sensors in that general area. I also learned through research and other mentions on Stack Overflow that sometimes it can actually make a difference which Thunderbolt port you actually use for charging. So for example, they said that on the left hand side, if you charge there, then your computer might slow down because of overheating much faster than if you use the right hand side. And if you're using multiple devices on your computer, spread them out evenly, but even then the heat in your computer will start to go up and up and up. But all of that didn't quite give me enough information, especially not about the reason of all of this, because I just noticed it is getting really, really warm. But why? What is going on and how can I change that? With more research, I found out that actually something called throttling was happening to my computer. And that is basically that the CPU usually is able to do a certain amount of calculations per second, but if it's getting too hot, too warm, then the CPU is starting to limit that so that there's not more heat produced. I actually figured this out by also installing a tool called Intel Power Gadget for my Intel-based MacBook Pro. And that's a free tool that you can download right now as well. And you can see there how your CPU actually performs under pressure. This one actually gave me much, much better understanding of what was going on. It showed me very, very clearly that if I use my computer with some software that is using a lot of CPU power, like for example, live streaming or exporting a video or even editing video in Premiere Pro, then it hits a certain threshold and within a couple seconds or maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds, it would start to limit the CPU power or the CPU frequency to something slower so that the temperature could not rise any further. And the tool actually showed those two graphs of the temperature going up, 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 and the CPU frequency also going up. And then the temperature would just stay the same, but the CPU graph would slowly go down. So the frequency was reduced. So I thought to myself, well, how can I fix this? And that's actually where those two ice bricks come in because I used those inside of a box to put my computer on top of the box, have those ice bricks below, and a little fan with all of that blowing through air. That actually helped quite a bit because it cooled down the computer so much that the clock speed would just stay the same. 
However, that whole setup gave me a lot of headaches because with that kind of cooling, with those ice bricks, there's also condensation and condensation makes the whole thing wet and my computer's not really built for underwater use. So I had to figure out another way. More and more reading about all of this, I actually found something. And what I found was just to clean out the fans. Who thought that it would be that simple? Simple, however, is the wrong word, because to do all of that, I actually had to go to a store, get a little bit of a can of air so that I could blow into things. And then I also had to open up my computer to actually get to the fans themselves. Doing that was actually quite complicated and kind of feels sketchy because some things have to click out of place and it feels like you're breaking things apart. However, I'm not going to show you that specifically because it's different for all kinds of different Macs from different years. So please look up the information for yourself, maybe on ifixit.com and you can get that information about different computers from there, how you can open them up and how you can get into there to actually get rid of the dust. And that's actually what I found. And I will include some photos of the status that I found my computer in when I open it up for the first time. It was ugly, it was hideous. There's so much dust in there, I just couldn't believe it that a couple of years worth of use would make it that bad. But again, it's a used computer. It's something that I do every single day, pretty much. And oftentimes I use this computer also in a bed or on a couch. And also I was traveling around the world with this in all kinds of different climates, different kinds of environments, different kinds of rooms. So it did kind of make sense. I just didn't expect as much dust as I found. The worst part about all of this is that it actually clogged up the whole venting system. So I actually found a lot of dust right in those areas where the heat should have been dissipating and the airflow should have been. This is also the reason why my computer was super loud and I always wondered why that was. So the trick here was that now I had to use that air canister to blow out the dust. And this is something that you have to really be careful with because those canisters, if you don't handle them correctly, will actually also spray some kind of water or at least some kind of fluid. Probably not that big of a deal if it's not really that much and it just dissipates anyways, but probably still a good idea to never hold your canister sideways. So always hold it normal straight up and just blow onto whatever you are blowing onto and use it as the description on the packaging. For myself, I used that. I also used a little bit of a brush and got rid of most of the dust, closed it all up, and I was so excited that I forgot to take a photo there, but it was looking much, much better. It was kind of clean, it looked almost like new, and the funny thing is, that's almost how it performs now. I started it all up again, I looked into the statistics, I used the Intel Power Gadget again to track the performance, and I was blown away. Even in the same room, because I still was in that attic, even in that same room, without the ice packs, without any additional stuff, this one change to actually get out all the dust from those vents, from those airways, and from those fans, that made all the difference. I now have the Intel Power Gadget running. I pretty much always go to the maximum of the CPU power, not necessarily overclocked, but in that nice range where it uses a lot, and that is such a game changer. And I absolutely can recommend you, if you feel comfortable doing something like this, look into your computer, have a look if it's full of dust. Because if it is, most certainly you're not using the full power that is given to you. And now having this speed and this result and this change, it actually made me not want to do the other change with these thermal paste because the work to do that in this specific MacBook model would be to take out everything from the computer disconnect it all, and then also change the thermal paste from the CPU and GPU, risk breaking something, and then putting it all together. Yes, I could probably do that, but it's not really necessary considering the difference that it already made to just get rid of the dust, and that was already something that is so significant. So if your experience is that your computer is a little slow, maybe it's a really good idea to check out the Intel Power Gadget, see if it has some correlation to a temperature inside of your computer, and then try to open it up and get rid of the dust. 
For me, it meant that now I can actually use my computer again in hot environments with powerful tools like Premiere Pro, exporting video, live streaming, and doing similar things. It also means that now my computer is actually quieter because the fans aren't spinning as crazy as they were doing before that. So that's a plus on all sides. Most likely, it's also increased my battery life because the fans again aren't spinning as much, but I haven't really noticed that that palpably. However, that's also really hard to notice because it's something where it's a difference of whether or not my computer shuts down after three hours or two hours and 30 minutes. That's a time frame that's really hard to grasp. At the end of the day, I can absolutely recommend this procedure if you have those issues. Download the Intel Power Gadget, look for yourself if your computer is throttling or not, and if it is, open it up, get rid of the dust, and have a happier life. If you wonder how to do that, you can YouTube search or Google for your specific model, and then also looking at replacing the battery, for example. Even though you're not doing that, this is actually something that will help you to understand how to take off the bottom cover so that you can actually get into your computer and have that access to those air vents and the fans specifically. Now, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. Like this video if it was helpful for you so that other people can find it as well. If you know someone who has problems with their computer, maybe you can send this video to them. And subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and other topics. I hope your computer will get faster by doing this, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.